morning. Hope you guys and gals had a great week. Thank y'all for joining us here at St. Paul's for this hour of worship. We're going to start off praise and worship now if y'all want to stand and sing with us. Stumbling in like a prodigal child. See the walls start crumbling and let the gates of glory open. If you're lost and wrecked again, come stumbling in like a prodigal child. See the walls start crumbling and let the gates of glory open wide. of glory open wide. You'll remain standing for our, our, our affirmation of faith. We believe in God the Father. We believe in Jesus Christ. We believe in the Holy Spirit. And he's given us new life. We believe in the crucifixion. We believe that he conquered death. We believe in the resurrection. And he's coming back again. We believe. Good morning, please be seated. Good morning, everyone, and welcome to our 11 o'clock service. We are so happy to have all of y'all here, and we're so thrilled to have Lori Spangler back with us and her family. 
for um, our 70th anniversary party. Uh, so thank you, Lori, for being here with us. I'd like to draw your attention to a couple of announcements that we have in our bulletin. For this month, our dollar makes a difference is going to go to Montesuntas, the Hands Together Mexico Ministry Partnership. So make sure you bring your dollar for this month. Or I guess that's August now. Anyways, um, we are going to be having an M&M's brunch Sunday, August 21st. It's going to be from 10 to 1230, which is kind of weird times. But um, it's going to be kind of like a science fair. We're going to have posters of everything that we have going on. So it's a lot. And if you want to sign up for anything, there's going to be sign-up sheets in there as well. So I just encourage you to be praying about that and get ready for some good food. We are also um, doing some feeding ministries, and we need volunteers. Every Monday at 9.30, a group prepares sandwiches and sack lunches for the Renewal Center. So if you would like to do that, please join us tomorrow. And then Grace Place, we go... I think it's the second Friday of every month, so we'll be there this Friday, August 12th, and we need servers from 11 to 1-ish, and if you would like to cook, we also need cooks, and I think it's about 9.30 to 9 to 10.30-ish. Uh, On the back of your bulletin, you'll see some of the anniversaries and birthdays we have this week. So if you know any of them or see any of them, give them a congratulations on their anniversary or a happy birthday, and I know they will appreciate it. If you'll also notice, um, we have some flowers on the bulls in there. St. Paul's is going to extend our Christian love and sympathy to the family of Dr. Ed Coates on the loss of his wife, Susan Coates. The services were held here on August the 3rd. If you'll please keep the members on the prayer list in your prayers as we go throughout this week. Please pray with me. Dear God, thank you for letting us gather here today. Thank you for all the amazing things we are able to do with our church, for our community, and to further your kingdom. We admit that sometimes we fall short of your expectations. We prioritize ourselves over others. We withhold forgiveness, and we don't love our neighbor. We ask for forgiveness, O merciful and gracious God. We ask for forgiveness for our sins, and we invite your Holy Spirit into our hearts to make us better disciples for you. Remind us to slow down in our daily lives and enjoy all the blessings you have for us in this moment. In this moment, we live for you. We pray for those who are struggling and feel weak to have your strength because you fight for us. We pray for those who are sick and hurting to have your peace and be healed by you, the great physician. We pray for those on our prayer list and those on our hearts and minds. We pray that all of these people know they are loved and cherished by you, our God, the one who created each of us in his image our protector, and our salvation. We pray all of this in your holy name with the prayer you taught us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. Now please stand and sing with me for our praise song set.
accepted you were condemned I'm alive well your spirit is within me because you died and you rose again amazing love how can it be that you my king would die It's my joy.
kids to come down for the children's sermon with Miss Jill. Good morning, everybody. And I brought something with me. What is this? It's McDonald's. And what is it specifically? A Happy Meal. Happy Meals make me happy. Happy Meals are awesome. What is your favorite part? Most kids love a Happy Meal. Okay, you got to admit, there's, there's, there's something happy about a Happy Meal. What's your favorite thing about the Happy Meal? Do you know? The fries. Me too, Eliza. Yes, I love a French fry. That's the reason Miss Jill should not be buying any Happy Meals. Yes. What else do you like about a Happy Meal? The chicken nuggets. The chicken nuggets. Yes, they're awesome. What else? What? The toy. Yes. Look at this one. This one's not easy. I don't even know what this critter is. Do y'all know? Oh, okay. So do you know what this is? Yeah, isn't that awesome? I, yeah, I, I think it's awesome. I don't know what it is, but I know somebody does. Yes. And it's going to make somebody happy. Well, the reason I brought a Happy Meal today is because did you know at the church we have a Happy Meal? We have the greatest Happy Meal. Did you know that? Do we, it involves Jesus. You are exactly right, Ella. And today I want to talk to you about the kind of Happy Meal we have every month in the church, and it's this one that's on the communion table. What is that? What do we have at communion? Bread and the cup. That's right. And when we have that meal, that great meal reminds us of something Jesus did. What does it remind us? The, the, the bread and the cup remind us of Jesus' body and blood. That's exactly right. Now, in the Methodist church, we have two sacraments, okay? This is one of them. And the reason it's a sacrament is because Jesus told us to do this. He told us in the Bible, he said, do this to remember me. So every month, we set this table, and we eat the bread and drink from the cup, and it reminds us of what Jesus did for us. And it is a happy meal because it reminds us of the greatest gift that God gave us, Jesus. That's exactly right. Jesus gives us life and love, and because of him, we live forever, which is the greatest gift. Now, I have a poem that I'm going to give you all. Everybody gets a copy of this, okay? I want to read to you, and then I'll give you a copy at Children's Church. It says this, this happy meal doesn't look like much. And it doesn't come with a toy. It may not fill my stomach, but it fills my heart with joy. The bread and juice remind me of the Savior's love for me when he died upon the rugged cross on a hill called Calvary. There is no way I can describe the gratitude I feel each and every time I eat the Savior's happy meal. So today at the end of Children's Church, I'll bring you back in. And you'll celebrate communion. So we'll talk about that this morning, and I'll give you a copy of that prayer. Okay? Show me your prayer hands. Let's pray together. Dear God, we thank you for Jesus, who loves us so much. We thank you for this meal that reminds us of the greatest gift that you have given to us. In Christ's name we pray. Amen. Thank you, Miss Jill, for that wonderful children's message. That poem is so cute. And Lori asked me at 9 o'clock, did Jill come up with that? I was like, she's not that good. <laughs> but she could be. My goodness. Um, we are so thankful to have her here with us. I'd now like to invite the ushers to please come forward for our offering. I'd also like to remind you to please fill out your communication cards and put those in the plates. 
You'll notice on the back of it at the bottom, we're doing a back to school breakfast. If you would like to help us cook for that, please put it on there. And if you wanna bake something that's not on there, just like write it out and we will be appreciative, I promise. And we can eat all the leftovers, so don't worry. There are plenty of ways to give to St. Paul's. You can do it in the plates or um, do it snail mail or do an automated drive. If you would like to know any of that stuff, please just let us know and we will get you all signed up. Please pray with me. Dear God, today as we prepare to give our offerings, we are reminded of the gifts you have given us. You've given us a loving church, people around us, air that we can breathe and food that we can eat. But most of all, you gave us your son. Our human greed can keep us from giving back to you. So help us to take away our sins and love you with our whole hearts and give back to you with our bodies. In your name we pray. Amen. will rise for our doxology. How great is our God to sing with me. How great is our God and all will see. How great, how great is our God. own oh there it goes okay earlier we were arguing about why the mic didn't work and I'm like it, it's on I, it's got to be the batteries are dead so I go and I switch it out for another one and I come back in and they tell me oh because it's muted I'm like y'all could have told me that instead of making me look dumb well hello friends I have missed you guys so it's so good to be here this morning I'm super excited um, I even did a mini sermon in Sunday school and they were really excited about that um, I think they were glad when I left but anyway, I have missed you guys. I'm thrilled to be here this morning and, and just to get to, to love on you and just to see your faces, to be in the presence of the Spirit together is, is just super special to me. So thank you for allowing me to, to be back and to share the word with you this morning. But the word is going to come from uh, Philippians this morning and we're going uh, to look at Philippians 1, 3 through 11. And this is what the word says. I thank my God every time I remember you. In all my prayers for all of you, I always pray with joy because of your partnership in the gospel from the first day until now. Being confident of this, that he who began a good work in you will carry it on to completion until the day of Christ Jesus. It is right for me to feel this way about all of you. Since I have you in my heart, whether I am in chains or defending and confirming the gospel, all of you share in God's grace with me. God can testify how I long for all of you with the affection of Christ Jesus. And this is my prayer, that your love may abound more and more in knowledge and depth of insight, so that you may be able to discern what is best 
and may be pure and blameless for the day of Christ, filled with the fruit of righteousness that comes through Jesus Christ to the glory and praise of God. This is the word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. Well, this morning I want to uh, teach you something. Uh, some of you may know, I know, um, I see Johnny there. He's going to know this for sure. Um, some of you others that, that work out are going to understand this. Uh, but there's a thing called muscle memory. Now, muscle memory is the act of committing a specific... Don't you laugh, Johnny. I see you laughing. <laughs> muscle memory is the act of committing a specific motor task into memory through repetition. When a movement is repeated over time, the brain creates a long-term muscle memory for that specific task, eventually allowing it to be performed with little to no conscious effort. While your muscles themselves can't really remember anything, they're full of all these neurons attached to your nervous system that play a role in motor learning. So the better shape you were in, the less time it will take you to get back into shape. Your muscle memory remains for a long time after your muscles have faded. Your body will remember how to run, how to lift. You just have to remind it to get those muscles, blood vessels, and lungs back into shape to make it happen again. Now, unfortunately, I know these things because I've been doing a little research. And I've been doing a little research because of this ugly three-letter word that starts with the F, ends with the T, and we don't talk about it. It's kind of like we don't talk about Bruno. Well, we don't talk about this ugly word. And so uh, since I have last been with you guys, I have uh, uh, acquired a little uh, fluff. We're going to use a better word. A little fluff. Um, perhaps it has been due to the fact that I've been lifting forks and not dumbbells, but that's another subject in and of itself. But there has been just a struggle, and I said, I've got to do something. But how do I begin again? I hate the idea of starting over. I've done enough starting over in the last three years, three moves in three years, and I know people have done more, but it's just not fun. So you find yourself beginning again and again. And I thought, I've worked out for years. I know what to do, but I really just don't want to have to start over. And so I began to do some research, and I remembered, you know what? Muscle memory is a thing. When I get back in, they're going to remember. So I was excited to research that. But I'm going to tell you something. Do you know who has a really strong prayer life? Is a woman who's trying to get into something that doesn't quite fit. That prayer sometimes sounds like, Lord, you parted the Red Sea, but I'm going to need you to bring this zipper together real fast. So that's what's been happening in my life. This morning I pray, Lord, if that dress don't fit, I'm going in my pajamas. It's, you got to make something happen. And so you're really thinking, what is she talking about? What is she going to bring this morning? What does it have to do with muscles? Well, don't worry, you know I'm going to tell you. You see, you never really lose that muscle memory. Your body remembers how to do things. As soon as you begin to exercise, your muscles will begin to grow. Now, they're not going to pop up like Popeye when he eats a can of spinach. It's not going to happen overnight. But they will eventually appear. Slowly but surely, they remember and the growth will continue. So in our scripture this morning, Paul is showing us how to strengthen our spiritual muscles. And one way in which he is doing this is through remembering. Not only remembering, but in giving thanks. Paul is teaching that one of the ways to, to grow in your spiritual lives is to remember, to give thanks. Paul's letter to the Philippians is sometimes described as a love letter. Paul wrote uh, many different letters to many different areas, but the people of Philippi had his heart. They were the ones that, that he longed to be with. They were the ones that he was so affectionate about. He didn't always try to correct them like he did everybody else. There was a deep, intimate, loving, connected relationship with Paul and the Philippians. They had a bond of Christian fellowship where each part of the party held one another in love, affection, and support. And so while it was traditional in the ancient times to begin uh, letters with such thanksgiving, Paul goes above and beyond that. As I said, he has an intimacy to his letter. It's more than just thanksgiving, but it overflows from Paul's gratitude for their support. Not only when he was with them, but especially now when he is apart from them. These verses also illumine for us part of the nature of prayer. 
Because there are two elements in particular that deserve our attention. First is that thanksgiving is at the heart of prayer. It is a tremendously powerful thing. Paul begins this section of his letter with a simple but profound statement. And I hope this may be familiar to some of you. But Paul simply says, I thank my God upon every remembrance of you. When I wrote my news article every month in the epistle, I always signed it. I thank my God upon every remembrance of you and for all of those to come. I don't know if you remember that, but that's how I always sign my letter. Little did I know how much that would mean to me now. Because I truly thank God for every remembrance I have of you. And as Paul did, I remember with great joy. Paul uh, loved these people. They poured into him. He poured into them. It was a beautiful relationship. Over the last months, I believe you have all um, had several of your associate pastors and, and senior pastors come and preach like I am this morning. And I'm assuming that some of them, if not all of them, shared remembrances of their time here. They reflected back on the joy uh, that you brought to their lives and they brought to yours. I hope that they were all good memories. I know that mine were. Like Paul, I am thankful and grateful for my time at St. Paul's. Especially in that first month when I thought I was going to get fired. Not many of you know this. But it, within the first month of being here, I decided I wanted to help with the bulletin. And in the little um, coffee room there in, in the office where Miss Linda Burns does her stuff, there was this antique relic of a printer there. And I thought, I can handle this. It's okay. I killed it. Like it died on my watch. And not only did it die, but it had these big canisters of ink, and they got all over the carpet. And you should have seen me scrubbing and praying. Lord, this is how my career ends. This is how my calling ends. This is it. I'm a goner. I, I can't. I mean, carpet in the church is a big deal, y'all. Try switching the colors and watch lives be turned upside down. <laughs> but this, 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 this big relic of a machine has been here since before Jill, y'all. 20-something years. There was no resuscitating it. I tried. It died. And I had to come to them and tell them, I killed it. I'm so sorry. And I thought I was going to be fired. But I'm thankful and grateful for grace because I wasn't fired and neither did I try to print very much after that either. I'm still a little gun shy. But there were so many things that I would become more thankful for, more grateful for. Because my time here allowed me to grow in ways that I didn't fully see until recently. You see, leaving St. Paul's was a shock. It was heartbreaking for me and my family, and for many of you as well. But looking at where I am now and how I have grown in such a short period of time is only by the grace of God and your prayers. I didn't realize it at the time. But when I left, I was leaving behind a tribe, a tribe of faithful believers who would be praying for me. And y'all, I got chills as I just said that. It makes my heart and my spirit soar. For me and for many others, St. Paul's has been a life source, a source of this fresh living water. John 7, 38 says, Rivers of living water will flow from the heart of those who believe in me. If you know much about nature, particularly bodies of water, you know that those that flow bring the most life, especially mountain streams, that the water comes down and flows and it's fresh. But if you were to compare that to, uh, say, a pond, which is really gross when you think about it in general, nobody really likes a pond. It's, it's murky. You don't know what's in the bottom. You don't know how stale or stagnant it can be. It's, it's life devouring. Some things go in and they don't come out. A swamp collects and retains water that comes its way. But as Christians, we're not to be like those ponds. We are to let blessings flow through us and to others like living water. Because if we don't, we're in danger of becoming spiritually stagnant, emotionally detached, and intellectually cynical. So the freshness is in the flow. The life is in the flow. 
And one of the ways in which we strengthen our spiritual muscles is when we allow our blessings to flow. And we remember, don't be a pond, be a river. That's what St. Paul's has been for so many people and will continue to be. A source of life, overflowing blessings into others. But you know, before we can really strengthen those muscles, we've got to understand and be able to identify what those blessings are. In order for them to flow freely and abundantly, we have to identify them. Too often we go through life and we're oblivious to all the good that comes flowing into our lives. Now, we're not much of a letter-writing society anymore, but imagine if we were, or imagine how our conversations with people would go if we began to have a Paul mentality, if we began to, to identify our blessings and give thanks. So what about the next time uh, I decide to have a conversation with Tanya? And I say, and this is not uncommon for us, so I probably should have picked somebody else, but that's okay. But oftentimes, Tanya and I uh, will tell each other, I am so thankful for you. you you're, you're a blessing to me. We, we recognize these gifts in one another, and, and we value our friendship, and we value the fact that God has placed us together, uh, because honestly, if I wouldn't have moved to Monroe, I'd just know that she's like Jim Taylor person. You know, I'm sorry, Tanya. But now she's my person. And, and, and we've poured that into each other. And so what if our conversations with people were like that? What if we looked up and said, Myra, I love you and I thank God for you because you're kind and you're generous and you bring much joy to my life. And Lisa, I could say, Lisa, you have mentored Jackson for years and you show up to ball games and you go above and beyond to give us love and I'm so thankful for you. What if our conversation shifted to a place of allowing us to recognize and give thanks for people in search and situations and, and different uh, moments? What if, now this is a hard one, what if you walked into work um, to a meeting one day and instead walking in uh, uh, dreading it or, or bringing all the baggage of the rough morning you had, what if you walked in and just simply said, I'm so thankful for y'all. I am so thankful for what you do. I'm thankful that you show up day in and day out. I'm thankful that we get to go through this together. Uh, Think about our teachers and our nursing um, staff, those that really have to bond together to make it through the day because their jobs are hard. What would it be like for them to strengthen one another even more so by just pouring out thankfulness and gratefulness? What if you were to sit down with your family or when you're driving along in the car and you said, you know what, I'm so thankful that you are working so hard in school. I'm so thankful that that you care about your grades. I'm so thankful that that you decided to, to help with VBS even though that's outside of your wheelhouse. What would our family relationships look like if we began to be more thankful and grateful? My family's laughing, don't y'all dare say a word. Sometimes we miss the mark. But I will tell you this, yesterday I was having a bad day. I was stressed about some things. I I was really overwhelmed, and I wore my pajamas to work, if that tells you anything. I had to go to the office and do some things, and I said, I'm just going to go in my pajamas. Nobody's going to see me. Go take care of some business and and do that. But my heart was tugged, because I was like, man, I really need to clean the house, and I need to get the laundry done. And and we're moving Callie back to Mississippi today after church. And and my mind was just going. You know how we do? It's just going and going, all the stuff, the the hamster wheels turning. And I was like, you know what, Jason's like, just go. You go focus on what's important, and then come back, and and we'll we'll deal with it. And so I got back, and I uh, came in, and I was just kind of going over some stuff with him, and, and then at one point I had to, had to stop, and it's like, thank you for vacuuming, because that's all I wanted to do yesterday was vacuum, as terrible and crazy as that sounds, but if you know me, you know my love for cleaning, and cleaning brings me peace, and it helps me order my thoughts and my life, and I just wanted to clean my house yesterday, but I came home, and he had vacuumed, and, and I, I had to stop for a minute, and I just, you know, thank you for vacuuming. I tell everybody now, you vacuum, Sorry. But it meant something to me in that moment. I was so thankful. I was so grateful because I had been seen. I had been seen in my struggle, and I needed him to know that. So what if our relationships look like that? More thankfulness, more gratefulness. 
You see, thanksgiving is powerful because it builds up the other person. It names what is beautiful and wonderful, and it links it to the goodness of God, the giver of all gifts. So we're not just honoring people. We're not just being thankful and grateful for them, but we're honoring God, who is the source of all things. St. Paul's poured many blessings out to me and my family. And the very first week that we were here, the blessing of hospitality was overwhelming. Food was brought and gift cards were given. And the genuine love and smiles, it was beyond anything that we expected. To be honest, I'm just a small town girl from Wynn Parish. I grew up in the country. Like, that's who I am. You know that. So I really expected to come and to be devoured to not be smart enough and to, to, to not know certain things. And, and I was very anxious, but that is not what we experienced here. Instead, uh, we were welcomed by so much love and energy. And, and y'all, that is one of the many, just one of the many, many blessings that I cherish about St. Paul's. But it's not just what you gave me, but it's what you give when someone walks through those doors. Every time someone walks through those doors, St. Paul is welcoming and loving, inviting. It's familiar, even though it's not anything known before. You see, this is what Paul experienced the first time in Philippi. These brand new believers, these people, they had trusted him. They had loved him, and they were willing to work with him to see God's kingdom enlarged. Now, there were other people in the world, other people in the Christian world that still were hesitant. They didn't trust him. They still knew him as Saul and not as Paul. And sadly, as we know, your past has a tendency to follow you. And his was like a ball and chain because there were people that still couldn't see past who he was. And maybe it's because they were afraid, and rightfully so. He was pretty brutal. But you know what the people of Philippi did? They were the opposite. They trusted him. They followed him. And they were a great source of encouragement for him. They were not only an encouragement to Paul, but Paul could see how his confirmation was being affirmed. He understood that this is who God is calling me to be. This is what God is calling me to do. When others doubted, when others were afraid, these people believed and they built him up they affirmed God's calling on the life of Paul so this church was a great source of uplifting faithfulness for Paul in the face of all the difficulties that the world had placed on him they were a great source of reassurance even in the midst of frailty and failure God provided Paul with a great source of faithfulness in the people of Philippi Y'all, I just want to shout amen and just like run up and down the aisle saying yes. Because that is what you did for me. That's what you have done for others for 70 years now. You have been a great source of affirmation and encouragement. You have allowed the gifts within each and every one of us to blossom. And, and, and you have allowed us to go on to other places, developing and growing. And I can never, ever get you to understand how grateful I am. Y'all took a little, fresh, new baby preacher out of the sticks into the city, and you allowed me to bloom. There are so many things I want to tell you. Some of them are happy, some of them are sad, some of them extraordinary, and some just regular day. There's so much I could tell you that has happened. Ways in which I've grown. Ways in which the things I have learned here have been nothing but an asset to me. But I don't want to drag around in that. Because there's so many memories and just not enough time. But instead I'll say this. Aristotle said we are repeatedly what we do. Excellent is, an, excuse me, excellent is not an act, it is a habit. We are what we repeatedly do. Like Paul, I want to encourage you to keep doing what you're doing because it works. Love God first. Love the church. Love the people of the church. And love the world as Christ has loved the world. 
And I pray your love would abound more and more. And that your love would be the standard to which all people would stand up and take notice. A love rich and deep and real. A love that points people directly to Christ as their Lord and Savior. I pray that you will continue to build one another up. That you will continue in the reading and the studying of God's word. I pray you will thirst for the word of God and the message of Christ. I pray you would be fulfilled, that you would be filled with the spirit-filled righteousness, the righteous deeds of the faithful, so that you may bring glory to God in heaven. Not that St. Paul's will be glorified, but that God will be glorified. Jesus mentions this in Matthew 5, 16, when he said, In the same way, let your light shine before others, so that they may see your good works and give glory to your Father who is in heaven. For 70 years, St. Paul's has done these things, loving, leading, guiding, encouraging, comforting, inviting. 70 years of greatness. And so I have to tell you, keep going. Keep going. Keep dreaming. Dream big dreams. Pray bold prayers. I told him earlier in Sunday school, if you're not pushed out of your comfort zone, if this is just a place you get to come and worship and leave, you're doing it wrong. This is a place that belongs to you, each and every one of you. Take ownership. Love your church. Find your passion. Give uh, abundantly and graciously. Serve. Do all the things. Because this is the greatest place. Come and allow it to be your church. Live into that truth. And watch what God does. Because ultimately it's his church. It's you. It's him you're serving. It's him you're glorifying. It's him you're making sacrifices for. When we do those things, we are strengthening spiritual muscles that have been dormant for quite a long time. And maybe you're thinking this morning, but I do those things. Well, what do you do when you reach one goal, you set another? If you lift five pounds, next time, go for ten. The problem is sometimes we don't push ourselves enough. We don't do things out of our comfort zone. We don't tell those people we're thankful and grateful. We don't recognize our blessings. We get distracted by the other things. So keep doing what you're doing but maybe it's better this way. Go big or go home. I mean, seriously. Isn't that what the Lord deserves? Go big or go home. Do everything you can for the glory of the Lord. So keep working your spiritual muscles and know that I truly thank God upon every remembrance of you. Every remembrance of you. And y'all better be glad I only have one hour because I just could keep on going. But I love you. And I'm so thankful for our time at St. Paul's. But the beauty is that now we get to end with one of my favorite things. And one of my favorite things ever, as you know, is Holy Communion. Because I love the idea of coming to the table, the table where everyone is welcome. Where we get to come and we get to, to seek forgiveness and reconciliation with God. And we get to remember that even though we bring baggage with us, we get to leave it here. Because God is, is so good that way. He takes uh, us everyday normal people and he invites us into this special place where we get to reflect and to remember to receive grace and mercy. And so that's what we do this morning. We come together and we'll have communion. And as we take the bread and, and we see the brokenness, we remember the body of Christ poured out for each and every one of us. And this is our reminder to keep going because Christ never gave up. He saw it through to the cross, and he's still there for us today by the power of the Holy Spirit guiding and leading us if it's the Lord will for 70 more years. So the body, the body that reminds us there's so much more. The blood reminding us of the flow of living life, life giving, flowing out and down into a broken world, not for just you and for me, but for all the world, for the forgiveness of sins. So
So I'm going to invite my servers to come forward. And we're going to share a meal together. And as Jill said, it is a happy meal. It's a happy meal for me because I get to share it with the people I love. I'm going to invite you, if you would like to spend time at the altar, to come and pray. But let us not go through the motions, but truly remember all that Christ has done for us and all that he will continue to do. So let us not settle for 70 years, but let us long for 70 more. table has been prepared. All are invited. So we invite you to please come. Jim will have gluten-free elements if you would like those. Had a man who climbed a mountain just to be with the one he times has he broken that promise it has never been done I've never climbed the highest mountain but I've walked the hill of Calvary just to be with you There's no price I would not pay, no, just to be with you, I would give everything, and even give my life away. I've heard it said. Swim the ocean just to be with the one he loves. But all of those dreams are an empty emotion, it can never be done. Well, I've never swam. to be with you I would give everything I'd even give my life away Now I know that you don't understand the fullness of my love how I got upon the cross for your sins and I know that you don't realize how much that I give you, but I promise I would do it all again just to be with you. I give everything. There is no price I did not pay. No, just to be with. Just to be with you, oh, just to be with you, oh, just to be with you, oh, just to be
you to please stand for our closing hymn. Come thou fount of every blessing to my heart to sing thy grace. Streams of mercies ever ceasing call for song. Thy goodness like a fetter by my wandering heart to be prone to wonder, Lord, I feel it I'm prone to. Y'all have done my heart good. My favorite things, preaching the gospel, Holy Communion, and people that I get to fellowship with whom I love. So thank you for having me back. If I can leave you with these words, let me leave you with this. Keep going. It's just the beginning. 70 years, you're just getting started. Unless you're 70 years old and you might not feel that way. But I'm joking. I'm joking. But seriously, keep going. There are so many of us who have come out of St. Paul's and who are thriving and doing so well, all because of the way you love, the way you live, the way you serve. So keep going. The kingdom is ready. Keep harvesting, keep planting, keep doing all that you do. In the name of God, amen. <laughs>